this morning we're going to take a look at the pilotage in West Sweden and, uh, and the skerries out on the coast here. It's so different from navigating in the English Channel or Long Island Sound or even the West Indies or practically anywhere else in the world really. This is typical Scandinavia. It's just islands everywhere here, islands, rocks and out on my port side is a group of skerries. Beyond them it's just the sea and you can see here there's a chap in here got a little house which is absolutely classic this is this is what they do the builder I mean there's I don't know what the access to that to that little house is but uh, he's in residence as you can see because his little flags flying and there's just this great big pile of rock but it'd be a lovely place to spend a summer's day and the navigation is all on charts of quite a not too ambitious a scale really I mean I've got my I've got my chart book here which tells me where I'm going to go. This passage I'm going through now is only about three or four boats, boats lengths wide uh, and ahead of me is a little island. If I look at the chart I can see that I've got to make a choice there. If I go right I get to the little town of Hamburg which is where we're headed. If I go left um, I get to goodness knows where. Sooner or later I get out to sea but I want to go to Hamburg and, uh, and see what's going on. So um, when I get there I'm going to show you all these charts and we'll see how it all works. Navigating in West Sweden. Well there's two ways to go really to get from one place to another. You can go outside into the big wide open sea here but that is pointless because you're just sailing along in the open sea and there's nothing very special about it really. It's like the open sea is everywhere. You know we joined the Navy to see the world and what did we see? We saw the sea. But if you come inside and sail along the coast, you've got this magnificent Skiergard, this place which is guarded by the Skerries, and it runs for hundreds of miles. It's the most amazing, wonderful place to sail. But when you look at the chart, it's pretty terrifying. I mean, here's a relatively good, easy place here, just coming, at, just coming through the islands, but, but when you look closely, there's rocks and bricks all over the place. And if you go a bit further north, We'll come up here, well, it's absolutely terrifying. I mean, how are you going to navigate through that lot and not hit anything? It's a major challenge. It's also a challenge trying to find somewhere to stop because all these places look tempting, but then you find there isn't enough water and what are you going to do? Well, the Swedish Cruising Club offer you all sorts of useful information. This book here is Anchor Places. These are places you can anchor and when you find them you see them first on the chart and that's well fairly clear really but it's it's not terribly encouraging. Much better to have a better look so what they do they've sent an aeroplane up to all these places and they've taken a wonderful clear view picture. They've dotted the soundings in so you can see exactly what's what. You can see that you can anchor anywhere in here, and me for two metres draft and a bit, I can anchor up here. I'd be a little bit hesitant here because there's two and a half metres there, a bit dodgy. If you've got a shallow draft boat, round here there are little pins on the wall, on the rock, and it's steep too, the rock, and it's one and a half metres in there. A lot of these harbours you'll see little pins on the water, and it'll be two and a half or three metres. And people like us can tie up alongside the wall. It's amazing. But this sort of information really makes a difference. It's available in book form. And also, nowadays, of course, the Swedes have moved with the time. And here's just a sample that I've put up on the iPad. I hope we're not getting reflection on it, but we'll hope for the best. So if we're sailing around this place called uh, Oddo, um, and we fancy anchoring in this place here, I just finger the anchorage, hit the eye, hit the button and there it is. It's all there. We can have a look at it from the air. We can see where we're going to go and here we can see what the depth is and there isn't much depth there so it's no good for us. But there's plenty of other places that are so this is a, a huge assistance. When we're in the cockpit <coughs> this chart which is a bit unwieldy for the cockpit um, comes up in terms of uh, as, a, as a book like this. 
It's the same chart, but it's cut up into book form, and they sensibly, unlike some charting authorities, including our own, when they produce yachting charts, um, the Admiralty chart goes exactly from one to the next, which is very awkward when you're, when you're changing pages. But this one, um, very sensibly, gives you a bit of an overlap, so you can move from one to the next safely. And I usually keep this in the cockpit with me for instant reference, because really, um, you know, some people don't like it, but I don't mind having a chart in the cockpit. I think it's very sensible. You can write a lot of notes if you want, but trying to write a lot of notes for getting through this lot, you'd be writing an essay. 2,000 words. Make sure you don't make any mistakes, mate. That wouldn't be any good. Much better to have the chart. And now we've got Raymarine as well. We've got the, we've got the iPad, the, the, um, We've got the eye charts here, the Navionics charts, which at this scale, at this quality, are pretty jolly good actually. Um, the Swedes set great store by these and I've found them to be very good. Um, the ones on the iPad, the, uh, the app for the iPad, the Navionics, doesn't seem to work quite so well, but the one on the big plotter here, the Raymarine plotter, is wonderful and uh, I've found that very useful. The only trouble is that in my case it's down below because I don't like having my plotter on deck in front of me when I'm sailing. When I'm out at sea I don't really want to look at that all the time. It would be handy in the islands here but uh, not at sea. So what we've got is something that's very very handy indeed. We've got a little app here uh, which is essentially what look like raster charts and they come from Sweden and here they are. We can zoom in on them and have a really good look and we want to know where the boat is. There it is. Little motorboat they've given me. Well, there's a few of them around. And uh, the great thing about this is that you can see where the boat is and relate it immediately then to the paper chart. So you can see where you are. In the old days, navigating through places like this, uh, <laughs> it was just so easy to get lost. You literally forgot where you were. So we used to have a little red arrow that you could stick on. And you, when you knew where you were, when you went past a boy or something, you stuck the arrow on and had a quick look at your watch so you knew where you were five minutes ago. And you could see immediately on this great complicated chart where you had to look. But all that's been superseded now by these excellent charts. And this whole thing, I can download the whole coast of Sweden here, and it seems half of Norway as well, for £17 sterling. That's all. What a deal. And if you really like books, we've got a pilot book as well. The only trouble is, it's all in Swedish. But, you know, the rocks don't move. The charts are what they are, you can read the chart, and this gives you an idea of what you're going to see when you get there, if it's a marina you're looking for. If it's an anchorage in the middle of the islands with nobody in sight, it'll tell you that as well. So, me and my, my shipmate Lord Nelson here are having a pretty good time. Uh, he sits in my chart table and keeps an eye on things, because I think it's not a bad thing to forget history, to, to, to remember history. And uh, so uh, Lord Nelson looks at it, he rather likes the little French girl up there. I don't know whether you can see her or not on the lights, not too good in here, but uh, she keeps an old chap happy. And uh, there you are, a bit of a look at my chart table, a bit of a look at Swedish pilotage, and actually um, they're going to kick me out of this marina in 20 minutes and I'm off to sea to find another remote anchorage. So maybe I'll talk to you from there. Cheers now.